there, welcome back to the Caffeinated Classroom if this is your first time here. My name is Marie, I'm a high school English teacher in San Diego, California, and I've been away from my classroom for quite a while. I am at just about the end of my third week back in person with like a hybrid concurrent model, and to take little brain breaks and get away from a screen for a little while during class, I've been going through my storage. So I have with me, <laughs> One of my boxes of an activity that I made up last year, it's an awesome introduction to a Shakespeare tragedy because they're always kind of shrouded in mystery and it's like a whodunit, especially the tragedy of Hamlet. We are going to do kind of an unboxing <laughs> uh, because I saw it and I got so excited and I just figured, hey, why don't I share some of that excitement with my friends from the internet, you guys. So we're gonna go through this. I'm gonna explain exactly all of the things that I do with this activity and why it is my students' favorite thing we do in my senior literature course. It is the thing that they always say, oh my gosh, Hamlet Murder Mystery Party was so cool and it set the tone for an awesome unit looking at Shakespeare. Um, so I'm gonna go through that with you today. If you wanna get your hands on this entire unit, all you have to do is register for the Shakespeare Teacher Festival from Brave New Teaching. We are holding the festival. If you're watching this on the day that it comes out, it starts, the festival starts on Monday, April 5th, 2021, and is a virtual festival. All of the content is available. It's brand new content all about teaching Shakespeare, bringing it to life in a new way in your classroom. Uh, every day next week, we'll have five days of content, and then through the 10th, you will have free access to all of the content there. and. You can download this entire activity after I go through all of that with you. So head to the description box down below or the blog post for this video and you'll be able to get your hands on that and some pretty stinking good Shakespeare strategy and, and uh, instruction strategy and curriculum ideas. Let's get started. All right, here we go. I'm super excited. I was going through, I have all of these like, you know, these scrapbooking boxes that are in one of the shelves behind me and they have uh, activities that are like resource heavy. They have a lot of stuff. I mean, I teach high school English, so not everything we do has a lot of recycled and recyclable elements to it, but it could and it should. It's not quite like an elementary classroom, right? Where we have all like seasonal and like topical stuff. A lot of that has to do with like text and paper that students actually use and then we give back, right? So I've started my own little way of organizing things. This one has a big old H on it. Let's open it up and see what the stinker holds. So the unit that I, oh no, my box is broken. Oh no, poor box. And I need to tape that or something because these stinkers are not cheap. I got this one on sale, maybe that's why. So I'm gonna kind of organize this so I can go through it with you, but the actual activity is a murder mystery party that is our introductory activity to studying the play Hamlet. If you missed the episode of the Brave New Teaching podcast where I talked through uh, the entire unit, I teach two plays in a matter of three or four weeks depending on like where we're at with uh, timing and bell schedule. Um, and we get through it in an amazing way and students up their analysis skills tenfold. It's pretty phenomenal and it's a really good uh, preparatory unit for college. I do this with seniors. It's a senior 12th grade lit course. If you missed that episode of the Brave New Teaching Podcast, head down to the description so that you can click on the link and give it a little listen. It'll give you a little bit more context to what we're doing here. But this activity is the very first day in that entire unit. And what we do is we take the premise of Hamlet and we take a little bit of liberties. Uh, basically, let me see what I can find down here. Students get on the day before or a couple days before we're going to start the unit, I ask them, hey, who knows the story of Hamlet? Or who knows which Disney movie <laughs> was made about Hamlet? To kind of suss out like who knows what happens, right? Who knows who is dead at the onset of the play, who knows who killed him, who knows what goes on, right? And all of the ins and outs of it. Once I figure that out, I've got a few key players because we're gonna do some role playing in this murder mystery party. And once I talk to those key players individually and I say, hey, you're gonna take a very specific role. So tomorrow or you know whatever the day is in class, everybody else is gonna be stuck out in the hallway, but I'm gonna bring you in first and you're gonna get your role and we're gonna explain some things. It's super fun and it just builds hype because other students see us like whispering and they're like, 
what are you guys doing? And I'm like, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. You'll know when you need to know. Then, day or two before, normally the day before, I hand out these little invitation strips. Let's see if I can get that stinker to, there you go. I know it's backwards for you, but I just typed these up in like PowerPoint. Thou art cordially invited to a royal ball in honor of the visiting King Edward IV of England. Where? Elsinore Castle, naturally. And then the last time I did this, or when this one was printed anyways, was 17th September. 2019, ah, it was a good year, at 13.02 sharp. So that's when the class period started. Hand those out. When students are ready to come in for the day of the actual party, I do like a mini classroom transformation. You guys have seen my, uh, my classroom has changed because we're now on like a concurrent hybrid, but hopefully it'll be going back to the way it was. Some of my classroom tours, I have big tables. They're normally set up in like a communal table style where they're long tables. And let's all remember that I teach in Southern California where I have upwards of the lower to mid 40s sometimes in my class. I'm lucky if it's 38. 38 is like a wicked small class in my, in my life. <laughs> so just know that everything I'm about to tell you, I'm taking liberties to make sure that everybody can participate who's in my class. Um, I set up just some like tablecloths, a couple of fake skulls that I get on clearance from the dollar store after Halloween, put them around, and I put like medieval loot music going on in the background, and there is a slideshow that's like, welcome to the ball. And um, I take some liberties in that. We're looking at um, Edward the Fourth, the history play, Edward the Fourth. Sorry, I had to like really think about that for a minute because I've just had a very long day of concurrent teaching. And the premise is that uh, the Crown family at Elsinore is inviting Edward and his court over and so and that gives me more characters to work with. So I, take the, I took the cast of characters from Hamlet, the cast of characters from Edward IV, and then I filled in with a whole lot of extras. Um, and you guys are gonna see this, speaking of extra, I am very, so this doesn't have to have all of the bells and whistles that I'm about to show you, but it can. So when students walk in, the first thing they are greeted with is the lights down completely. I've got a few candles that are those like, uh, like battery operated tea light candles that I put around that just kind of make it glow. I mean, it's the middle of the day, so it's still like pretty bright in here because I have big, huge windows. Um, but I turn all the lights off, have the music going, I have the screen on that's like, welcome to Elsinore Castle. And over on one of my other boards, I have a whole cast of the main characters that I have printed out their images from the film version that we will be watching. And when you listen to the Brave New Teaching podcast episode, you'll know what I'm talking about. I've got their names down there. So students are kind of orienting themselves as to where they are and who the royal family and their main like court of characters is. I've got big, huge letters that say Hamlet up above it. Um, and then, as students enter, they take a seat. At each seat, I'm all tangled, is one of these little lanyards. But it doesn't have to be a lanyard. Like I've done it before where I just punched a hole in the card. In fact, let me just show you down here what the cards look like. It's just, here. Here, Osric, you know, he's, he does a whole lot of nothing but talks. It'll have the character's name on one side, and on the back side, it'll have a description. Let's see if I can get that to focus for you. This one's Martha. I made her up. A little description of who the character is, and every character has a secret. I just made these up one day. Like I said, you can get this whole thing for free. Download it and go register for the Shakespeare Teacher Festival. I want people to have as much fun as I have and as my students have. Um, and it's a super text dependent activity too, so you'll see in a minute. So Martha is a maid in Elsinore Castle. She's responsible uh, for tending to the lodgings of any and all guests of the king. Her secret to keep is that Martha overhears a plot to assassinate King Hamlet. Dun, dun, dun. So students all get a different role. Claudius, uh, King Hamlet, Prince Hamlet, Gertrude, those are the ones that I'll give to students that already know the plot so that they can kind of screw with their classmates. <laughs> Fortinbras is invited, believe it or not, and because he, he's, uh, you know, the Prince of Norway who wants to come and like blow everything up. Um, but he comes and his secret is Fortinbras wants to attack Denmark to avenge his father's death. So we've got all these secrets to keep. 
students are instructed with a little card that either I can stand up and say or I can have one of like a town crier. Welcome friends and family to the crown, uh, uh, to the crown of Denmark, welcome. Please take time now to meet and make note of your fellow party guests in your ledger. I'll show you the ledger. Each person has a unique connection, and this is what's up on the board, and then it's also like red when like class the party starts. Uh, each person has a unique connection to the hosts, the king and queen of Denmark, or the guests of honor, the king and queen of England. Mingle, converse, and remember one thing. Each and every person here has a secret to keep. Enjoy. Dun, dun, dun. So that gets them going. They're supposed to talk to each other. The music turns on and students have a note sheet that they can carry around with them. It's normally a double-sided card. On one side of the card is their party notes. And the party notes, as you mingle with other party guests, jot down the names of any particularly suspicious characters, include why they strike you as suspicious. And then there's a formal accusation which they'll do at the very end of the party where they accuse somebody of the murder. So we do a few rounds of mingling. We make note, did anybody see anything interesting? Oh, is there anybody that you found interesting? They start to form alliances. I let them mingle for a few minutes. I stop them. I have them take note of what's around them or write down any notes that they're forgetting. I let them mingle again. And I just kind of feel out how the party is going and how the students are working. Um, and then at a certain point in the party, there are these clue cards that have been placed all around. And the clues contain chunks of text. Some of them are red herrings and some of them directly tell them who killed King Hamlet. Oh, I forgot to tell you. After they mingle a couple of times, I, I yell out, murder! Our dutiful ruler of Denmark, King, King Hamlet has been found dead. And now it's become a murder mystery. Oh, my lights are changing. So they mingle a bit, stop them, take notes. Mingle a bit more, stop, take notes, murder! The king's been killed. He just took a step outside and then a serpent point poison in his ear underneath his favorite tree because everyone sits under a tree. Um, then they start to really take note of all of these clue cards that are around the room using the text to and what they have gained from talking to other party guests to kind of figure out what they think happened. After this goes on, however long you want it to go on, I just, once again, feel out the room. Let me see what else I can show you that's in here. Oh, I just have, I, <laughs> when I had multiple class periods, I had to color code my uh, invitations. Sometimes if I have a particularly large class and there are a lot of characters around, I will put um, like the, I will put everybody's name up on a board with like a family tree kind of a thing. The court of England, servants, the court of Denmark, servants. Um, just so students can kind of look at things and start making their accusations. And at the end of the party, everybody fills out the formal accusation side of their sheet. And what they do is they really think through Okay, who do I think actually killed him? And like I said, so, some of these character cards and, and uh, descriptions have red herrings in them, but those red herrings have nothing to do with the text evidence. So it makes students really think through and really read what they see in these clue cards. Because on their formal accusation, they have to write the name of the accused character. It's so funny because they'll write their friend's name and go, oh wait, no wait, you're Osric. Oh, oh wait, no, wait, you're Steve. No, wait. <laughs> their motive for murder that they think, which piece of evidence they think really is the smoking gun. So like clue number, whatever. And I think I have 12 or 13 clues. If you do this in your classroom and you have particularly advanced students, you might wanna cut a few of the clues because some of them just like straight up give it away. Um, and then analysis of the evidence, basically how and why does this piece of evidence prove? Why, how is it and why is it the smoking gun, right? That like proves that that character did it. They turn in their accusations. We kind of take a poll. Sometimes I write on the board who, you know, who was your accused. And then time permitting, or maybe the next day in class, we watch the first act. Because in the first act of Hamlet, you see exactly what happened. You know exactly how, with it's the ghost scene with Hamlet and, and uh, the, um, the, his friends. And then with Hamlet, the, the ghost coming back and they find out exactly what happened to King Hamlet and we get to see who was correct, who, who was falsely accused. Um, and it is super fun. It's an amazing community builder because it's cool. 
and the kids who already knew the story are like always like oh you were so off I had so much fun just like sending you down the wrong path um, and then we get straight into the play and we start going in with act one we do some close reading and some other activities all of which I explained in that podcast episode I was telling you about but there you go. That is the murder mystery party for Hamlet that I have been trying to get out to you all so that you can use it in your classroom for over a year. It's been like a year and a half since I created it. It's just been very hard to get these things uh, up and out. But like I said, please join us at the Shakespeare Teacher Festival hosted by Brave New Teaching um, and a listen to that episode of Brave New Teaching where I run through the whole entire unit that this activity precedes. Um, and if you're teaching Macbeth, I mean, if you're teaching Hamlet, I highly suggest throwing in Macbeth. If you're just teaching Hamlet, you can take this and go with it. If you're teaching a different play, a different, I mean, some any anything else that's not even Shakespeare, a different sort of like a murder tragedy, you could take this idea and the shell and adapt it. Please use it at will. Uh, just post and show me what you do. And you know, like, like tag me in your post so that I can see how this works out with your students and that your students engage with it the way that mine did. If you do something different, I love hearing that stuff. So Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoy it. I hope if nothing else, this sparked some ideas for you of things that you could do in your classroom. And uh, until we meet again, I thank you again and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.